what are the essentials that you should take out with you when you leave the ship in port? I'm Gary Bemidge. This is another of my cruising tips for travelers. I want to talk about nine things that I think you should never leave the ship without when you're in port. When we head out in port on an excursion or self-exploring, we don't assume that things are going to go wrong. We assume we're going to have a great time. However, that's not always the case. There's probably four key things that I've seen go wrong either to myself or other people in port. And the little tips I'm going to give you are ways of making sure that you ease your way through those and make them stress-free. The first of those is you might get separated from your excursion or your traveling party. I was on a cruise recently, we headed out on excursion and what we hadn't realized is a lady with a young child had actually got separated and then was stranded in a country where she didn't speak the language and she was completely lost and in a massive panic. The second thing that could happen, of course, is you could be running late and in danger of missing the ship. So I know some people, again, on another cruise recently where what had happened is they'd gone off exploring and they'd lost track of time. They suddenly realized they were lost and they needed to get back to the ship before the sail away time and they didn't know what to do. These tips will help you solve that. The third thing, is you might have some kind of injury. So I have actually been on a cruise a couple of years ago where I fell really badly and broke my ankle. I've also been on a cruise recently where we were in Honolulu and one of the passengers headed off self-exploring and actually got knocked over and broke their leg. And the last one is you could fall prey to some sort of crime. So we've all been on excursions, I'm sure, where you've found people being pickpocketed or mugged or something like that. So these little tips will help you deal with any eventuality or problem you might have when you're out and about. So what are the nine things that you should be watching out for? Well, the first is the obvious things, the things that the cruise line tells you to take. First of all, you need to take your cruise card because that's the thing that gets you on and off the ship. Secondly, you need to take the tickets for the tour if you're heading out on a tour of some kind, you might need some tickets. And of course, you need any tour specific clothing with you. So if you're going swimming and you need beach towels or you need those shoes or you're heading off hiking or whatever it is, you're going to need those specific things. So those are kind of the obvious things. So what are the less obvious things? The single most important item that you can take on an excursion, and even if you forget all the other ones that I tell you, this is the single most important item. You either take the daily program with you or you make sure you've taken a photograph of the daily program. And really importantly, if you're on an ocean cruise, particularly who the port agent is, if you're on a river cruise, it's probably more likely to be the telephone number of the ship. This is absolutely essential for a couple of reasons. First of all, it reminds you of the get back time, the time you need to get back. But if anything goes wrong, so any of those four things happen to you, you have the cruise agent's number. These people are connected to the ship all day. They are used to every single kind of thing going wrong and they will be your absolute savior no matter what happens to you. So absolutely make sure so if everything else goes wrong, you have that. Also on that particular document will also be the port address. So I know a couple that were in a place where there were actually two different cruise ports and they had got a bit separated, a bit lost. They jumped in a taxi miles and miles away being taken to the port. It was the wrong port. So also it will have on there the actual port that you are docked at. Very, very important. The third thing that I like to take with me is government issued photo ID. Now in some ports you have to take it with you. I personally like to take my driving license rather than my passport. I don't like to have my passport out with me because if I lose my driving license, it's not as catastrophic as losing my passport. So government issued photo ID is really important because that will not only help you if you have any problems, but even if you do miss the ship or have to try and get yourself to catch up with the ship, having photo ID will get through a lot of those barriers. Also on some ships, depending on the itinerary, they also keep your passport because you're going through lots of different immigration things, so you would have your passport. So I strongly recommend taking photo ID with you. It's gonna really be extremely helpful. And as I mentioned, it is also required in some places and some ports. What I do do though, is I like to have a copy of my passport. So I have a photograph of my passport, but also up in the cloud, you know, so on, whether it's Google Drive or Dropbox or wherever you like to store it. I also like to have a picture of my passport. So if anything does happen, I can also access my passport, a copy of my passport either on my phone or I can get it downloaded from the cloud. So that's what I also make sure I do because then you also have your photo ID and you have a copy of your passport details. That's gonna help you many, many times if you get into a predicament. The next thing that I recommend you ensure you take out with you is some kind of money or some way of paying for something. 
A couple of things that are really, really important linked to this are, I like to take out a couple of small notes of the local currency. So if you have things, I don't know, even using toilets, public toilets, for example, or you just need to pay a couple of dollars to get a taxi back to where you're going, or you need to get a bus or a metro or something. So having a couple of small notes is a really good idea. If you don't want to do that, particularly because you have lots of different currencies, the other thing I recommend you take is a debit card, because then you can go to an ATM and withdraw cash if you need it. So debit card or a credit card is really helpful to have out with you. The other thing that I strongly recommend you have access to, again, it might be a picture on your phone or in the cloud, is copies of your travel insurance details and particularly the assistance number. So most travel insurance will have an assistance company and a number where if you have any problems, you've lost something, you've been injured or whatever, they, that detail is really, really helpful and particularly if you have to go to a hospital or a medical center and you need those details. So having access to that, I wouldn't bother taking it with you, but knowing that you have it on your phone or you can download it is also really important. But having a bit of local currency is really, really helpful, even if you want to buy little bits and pieces in the market. Also, when it comes to money, the other thing that I like to have is an app, which is a currency converter on my phone. I, you know, particularly if you're not really good and it's a difficult exchange rate. So if you do want to go and buy something or in a market and haggling, you don't get ripped off. So I've done things before where I've gone and bought some sunglasses, for example, and I thought, well, these are a good deal. And I've got home and realized I've paid almost double what they would have cost me at the airport or at home because I've got the exchange rate wrong. So bear in mind, you know, in markets and in shops, particularly big tourist areas, they're pretty nifty and nimble at playing with the exchange rate and confusing you. So having a lap with a currency converter is a great idea so you can just check what things actually cost. The fifth thing that I like to take with me is my mobile phone for all sorts of reasons. First of all, it is, if I have an emergency, I can contact people. I can also put apps on there, so metro apps, or if I need to call an Uber, or the currency converter I was talking about, or sometimes you can get guides, all sorts of things on the mobile phone. But very important, what I also like to take is one of those chargers, so not a plug-in charger, one of those battery pack booster chargers, because if I have a problem or my battery runs out, then obviously I can use that to keep it charged. So I like to know that I've got my phone with me at all times and it's nicely charged. Of course, for many people, your phone also becomes your camera nowadays because the quality is increasing. Nowadays, particularly when I'm heading out on excursions and if I'm not doing videoing, for the channel or whatever, I just use my mobile phone nowadays for photographs. And so that's also a key thing to have. Now, of course, because we're taking all these bits and pieces that I'm recommending, the other thing that I always make sure I do is have a safe place to keep all the stuff. So some people like to have those little bum bags or fanny packs or whatever they're called in it, where you're listening to this from, or one of those things you can put under your shirt or whatever where you can store things. The thing that I also like to take, particularly if I'm heading out to the beach, is one of these sort of wet bag things. Now, the reason I take that is either, of course, you can wear it when you go into the sea, but what I actually do with it, I like put things like my mobile phone, my cash, my cards, my cruise card, and I actually bury it in the sand underneath my towel. And particularly when I'm cruising by myself or even with a, my partner, we want to go in the sea together, then it's really a good idea to have this. So I use this a lot when I'm heading in the Caribbean or beach places burying my stuff. Of course, if someone comes along and starts trying to dig it up, if they've actually seen you burying it, which is probably unlikely, it's gonna cause a lot of attention. The other thing, if you are gonna take a little rucksack with you, make sure it's one of those rucksacks that are quite hard to get into, or make sure you put your valuables sort of inside the bag, because pickpockets are very nimble at unzipping, you know, the easy to access pockets. So make sure you've got somewhere safe to keep your valuables. The next thing that I always take with me and may seem a little bit fussy and fuddy-duddy, but I like to take a couple of first aid things with me. So in my little rucksack, I like to have a couple of headache pills, perhaps some antidiarrheals, some, if I'm heading out on a catamaran tour or I'd see maybe some seasickness tablets. But also one of the things I would recommend is if you are on some sort of medication which you absolutely have to take at a certain time or every single day, maybe just take one little dose of that or two doses of that in your stuff when you head out. So if you do have some kind of issue or you're delayed, you don't have to get stressed or struggle to get a copy of a medication. The other thing that I'd recommend if you are on medication is again, take a picture of either the prescription or the little bottles that you have your medicine in so people can see what it is. And again, either have it on your phone or up there into the cloud. So if you do have some issues and you need to have medication because you're stuck out, then you do know exactly what it is and you can show people the details of that. Of course, within that whole sort of first aid kind of area, 
obvious things like sunscreen, insect repellent, that kind of stuff. You know, I was recently on a cruise and I hadn't packed my insect repellent and got stung and bitten like crazy because I'd forgotten to chuck that into my bag. So again, thinking a little bit about the environment and the situation you're in and make sure you've packed things like sunscreen, insect repellent, whatever that is gonna be. Another really, really important thing that I always like to take out with me is water from the ship. So either what increasingly, of course, is one of those refillable water bottles or often you can are given or depending on the cruise line you might have to buy a bottle of water. That means that you know that when you head out, it's absolutely safe to drink the water where you're heading and you just have that reassurance. Also, it's really important to keep hydrated, of course. So always take out some kind of water with you. Some people, of course, like to take out snacks as well, but certainly water, 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 really, really important. Of course, then, if you are the sort of person that likes to take a camera out to take pictures, make sure you've got spare batteries and SD cards. There's nothing more frustrating. You head out on an excursion, particularly if it's one of those scenic all-day excursions, and you find that your battery runs flat in your camera or you run out of space on your SD card. It's all happened to us, and it's incredibly frustrating because you're then deleting other good pictures to get different pictures of things around you. So really important, make sure you've got those kind of backups. If you're heading out on a port excursion, don't just head out easy breezy and not think about those eventualities that could happen. Buy a few simple things which soon become really habit. If you do have the unfortunate position of having something happen to you, like one of those four things I mentioned at the beginning, you're gonna be able to deal with it really, really easily. I have loads more videos packed with all the cruising advice and tips, so why don't you watch another one of those right now?